So the scripture lesson today is from Mark. It's chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days after the suffering, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the heavens, and the powers in the heavens will be shaking. They will then, they will, they, easy for me to say, then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, from the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree we learn its lesson. As soon as this branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or in midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. So we have this story of the second coming. and. Um, I can't remember if I told you guys this or not, but probably about four or five years, well, it's probably been at least five years ago, there was a, a gentleman from Duke Divinity School that came to High Street. Uh, it was sometime in February or March. I came on a perfect day because I think it snowed eight inches. And so they expected a couple hundred people there that day, and they ended up with about a third of that. And he was really talking about Revelation and Daniel. And what he said before he started, he goes, how many people came here today because I'm going to tell you exactly when Christ is coming again. And there was about a third of the group that raised their hands. He goes, yeah, I'm not doing that. He said, hey, I don't know. It tells me in the scripture that nobody knows. And he said, I'm, I'm not going to do that. What I really am going to try to do is explain Daniel and Revelations to you in a way that I hope you understand better. Now, I was at Sugar Grove then, and about half of them would have been very disappointed because that's exactly what they came for. They wanted somebody to tell them the exact time that Christ was coming. And so, it, when we read this scripture, he's talking about this time of the darkening sun and the moon. Um, one of the things in one of the versions I read, it talks about all the Jews coming back together. So in, after World War II, when Israel was created by the UN, a lot of people thought that was going to be a sign of the second coming because it was, they were reading through the scripture. But what you really need to remember is, for Jewish people, that was what they expected was going to happen. And so Jesus is really just telling them what they've been taught their whole entire lives. Um, that's what they expected, that was common, and that was what they expected. Um, but what's really important for us is to not get all bound up on these images. So a couple years ago, I think it was now, there was what they call blood moon, where it turns real red, and so there was a big group then that decided, oh, that's when Jesus is coming the second time. Well, what this scripture is saying is, don't get all bound up in these images of what you think is going to happen. Uh, whether it's wars, whatever it is, don't try to read into it. It's really not important for us to figure this out. Um, the important message is Jesus is coming again. We just don't know when it is. Now, part of this uh, scripture, because it talks about my version, says generation. Before this generation passes, these things are going to come. So a lot of people thought that meant it wasn't true because that generation of people died and Jesus did not come back. Um, but I would say they're misreading that. The more appropriate way to read that has to do with the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. Because those things did happen within a generation, not the second coming. So I would ask you to read that again and see if maybe that's not a better reading of that. Um, 
And, and so when you go back in and read some of the Paul's works, uh, when he's writing letters to people, he is getting on them for not doing anything, for not trying to find um, Christ in their lives and not trying to find Christ in other people's lives. And this scripture here was kind of what led a lot of people to do that because it said, I'm coming back in a generation. That was the way they read it. Well, they didn't read it, but somebody told it to them that way. And so if Jesus was coming back, what's it matter what I do? If he's coming back in my lifetime, I'm a good person, it'll work out for me. Or I'm not a good person, I'm gonna do whatever I want. And that's what people did. And so a lot of Paul's writings are, you need to be prepared for the future. And they'd say, well, Jesus is coming. It's coming in the generation. It just says it right there. And he goes, no, you guys are not reading that right. He's coming sometimes, but none of us know when that time is. Um, and so he says, even Jesus does not know the time when that second coming is. Um, and so I would ask you, when you, if you read books or read articles, go on the internet, because you know everything you read on the internet's true. Um, any of those things that talk about, oh, because this happened and this happened and this happened and this happened, that means Jesus is coming in two hours and 32 minutes. Because you can find something out there that'll tell you that. What this is saying is, it's not really a good use of our time to try to calculate that. So what was the book series, the Left Behind books? That's kind of what they were. Benita read them, I did not, but it was the same kind of thing where all of a sudden those people were, were taken back to heaven. Um, but it didn't do them any good to try to calculate it because no one knew when it was going to happen. You had people on airplanes and people in cars and all of a sudden they were just gone. That's kind of the way I view it. May not be true, but that's kind of the way I view it. So the question is, what value does it have for us to try to figure out if it's today in an hour and a half or 20 years from now? And that's really what this scripture is about. What's really important for us is to be ready. So that last part when he talks about our masters, or he can talk about people we work for, or he can talk about, this is a TJ thing and I, spouses, we were talking about spouses today to be ready for our spouses and not keep secrets from them and hope they understand what we volunteered them for, stuff like that. He'll, tell, he'll explain it to you later, Sonia, you're good. Um, things like that we do. We don't always know when something's gonna happen. So how many of you ever been at work and you were working okay, but you weren't probably working as hard as you could because the boss was gone? Or you were the boss and you're gone and all of a sudden you come back unexpectedly. A lot of times people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I know that you guys find that hard to believe that somebody would do that at work, but it happens. And so we don't know when Jesus is coming again. We just don't know the time. And so for us, the whole thing is, are we ready? Are we prepared? Now for us, it's kind of two things. One is, we're supposed to get ourselves ready, but we also have an obligation to help any family or friends be ready. Now that's what I thought, and I already told you I didn't read the book, but from those left behind, it was, what would happen if some of your family didn't get to go? How would you feel and how would they feel? Because a lot of times I have friends and they'll go, oh, I'm a good person. Okay, that's not really one of the requirements. I'm glad you're a good person. I'm glad you think you do stuff to help people. That's not what this is about. It's do you believe in God and do you believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, and do you try to follow them to the best of your ability? It's not, oh, I'm a good person. Because that, that's not enough. So we don't know when that time is going to come. And for us, we have to be prepared. So a couple things I think you can learn from this scripture. Um, I don't believe that people that don't follow the Lord have a clue about what God has planned for us. And it's hard for us, if we don't follow the Lord, to 
to understand what the Lord has for us to do. Now, I think I've told you guys before that sometimes I'll hear God telling me, hey, Ed, you're supposed to do something. I think I've told you before I've had two or three chances to do prison ministries, and so far I've said no every time because I am pretty sure that is something I don't want to do. But it came up again the other day. And so I'm thinking, how many times is God going to have to hit me over the head before I'm going to figure out this is something I'm supposed to do? So far, the answer is one more time because I still haven't done it. Okay? But we hear that voice telling us what to do. And the question is, do we listen, do we follow, or do we not? And, and so I think if you don't have a relationship with God, that it's hard to know when God's calling you to do something. So we talked, I talked the other day about getting off the interstate. There was a guy there standing and he just wanted money. I have a hard time with that. And he was a pretty young guy. And, and so I chose not to give him anything the other day. Now, I don't think it was probably a coincidence that he was standing there on Thanksgiving Day because this time of year, people are doing family stuff. They're more likely to stop and help somebody. The question is whether he really needed the help or not, or that was just the way he raised the money? I don't know the answer, but I tried to think what God wanted me to do, and at that time, I didn't think God was asking me to help him. We have to have that relationship with the Lord to know when we're being led by the Lord and not led, misdirected, by something that's not the Lord asking us to do something. So for us, when that second coming comes, whenever that is, whether it's now, or 100 years from now, or 1,000 years from now, are we prepared or not prepared? So what I would caution you is not to get all tied up with these visual things that people will kind of pick, cherry pick out of the Bible to say, oh, when there's wars, or oh, when the Jews come back together, or whatever else they say. There was a group in Seattle that decided there was a comet, I think it was Haley's comet was coming by. So they decided that God was in the back of Haley's comet. And they ended up kind of a mass suicide because that's how they decided they was gonna go. And I can't remember that guy's name. I would say that was a false prophet. But somehow or another, they got misled. If they really knew the Lord, I don't believe they could have gotten misdirected. Um, we talked about Jim Jones, same thing. When he started, seemed like, you know, it was a, could have had an opportunity to lead a lot of people. He led a lot of people in the wrong way. And so you have to know the Lord to know whether you're being led in the right way or the wrong way. So don't allow these visual things that people bring to us to direct you in what you're thinking. Think about, pray to, pray to God to let God direct you the way that God wants you to be directed. And so the last thing is, are you prepared? If you're prepared, great. Reach out to people that aren't and try to help them get there. If you're not prepared, today is the day to start. Not tomorrow, not sometime next week. Because if the second coming is between now and whenever you decide to start, too late. So start, start now. Start today. Start as soon as you get home. However you decide you need to start, start. But don't wait because none of us know when that waiting time is up. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we're so grateful again that we could come together this day. Uh, we're grateful for family and friends, whether we came together in person or whether we did it through technology. Um, let us be sure to share your love, your grace that you give all of us. Let us all be prepared for when you come again um, so that we're not wanting or waiting. Uh, we also want to make sure all of our family and friends are equally prepared. Give us the courage. Um, the heart, the character that we need to reach out to those who do not love you. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen.